Boys, ladies, gentlemen, pronouns, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. We are your host, Tara Lawan, Will Compton. We have a special guest host today, Willow Lawan. And if you're asking yourself what she named after Will, the answer is yes. <laughs> Before we get into this upgrade of the boy who's got an incredible smile going on right now, we are sponsored and presented by the greatest truck on planet earth and that is the chevy silverado football season's officially over that doesn't mean we stop rooting for our favorite team favorite team you guys know the team it is the chevy silverado hey. the player chevy yeah the silverado chuck with unstoppable grit and determination according to jd power chevy trucks have earned more new vehicle quality awards than any other brand out there that's some serious hardware boys head over to chevy.com to learn more the silverado as strong and dependable as the people who drive them and for those guys who want to look into the research jd power jdpower.com forward slash awards brother how do you feel Smiling and seeing them new pearly whites because I, I know the man. Feeling. I feel like it's man. amazing. I do. I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, boys. I appreciate it. I got them done last night, and I literally go home, and I was, like, kind of showing tail in my teeth. I'm like, what do you think? And I'm, you, you're you thinking, like, I'm hype, but there's also a level of insecurity. Like, you're hoping they look really good, and you're hoping yeah. people are matching the same energy as you. But, like, I realized, because I noticed when you got your teeth done, like, your mouth is just always open, low-key. Like, uh, the boy always, always smiling now. And I'm kind of, like, looking at people like this now. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, so I'm kind of... Um pretty fired up dude you got the I'm dude, pretty the fired up right now you, you got a fresh cut right yeah, away you look good. Going. thanks dude thank you, you. i good. appreciate it mom's been sick today so uh i brought willow with me we went to the dentist together got a haircut together and now she's on the bus everybody welcome willow to the show willow Woo! yeah look at she's all I fired tell you up what, she fired up twirling that so hair you they, got a mole like daddy she's like, why are they all clapping daddy. yeah Oh, you can't hear it? That's because we're doing an intro to Daddy's work now. This is Daddy's work. This is what Daddy does for work. You get to hear Bustin' with the Boys. This is your, this is exclusive. Willow does like to, um, ran, like, now that she has the headphones on, like, we don't do iPads very much at all. But when we do, it's like flights, situations like this. And, the, like, right. anytime, like, you got to get something done, and you're like, bro, I just need you to just chill for a second. Yeah. But she doesn't, she did like, you know, when you have your headphones on, you don't know how loud you're talking. Now, when she needs our attention, she's going to scream. She's going to be yelling. She's like, Daddy! That's all right, her, because her mouth's not close to doing this? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, dude, that's sick. We'll be on the plane, like, people, like, 6 a.m. flights, like, going to Park City. And people will be sleeping. She'll be like, Daddy! Like, well, all right, dude, yeah. You got to so check she's this dialed. out. She's dialed right now, boys. Oh, oh, what, what do you got? Nothing. I was going to say we got a surprise. I know, I'm actually fired up. What, is it a good surprise? It's a oh. fire surprise. Am I, gonna, am I gonna love it or is this like a surprise? Like we're coming at Taylor. You're gonna love bit. it. No, you're gonna love it. Hang on. What did uh? Hey, you're gonna. Love we love a rumor. Okay, okay. so it's rumor. You're gonna love it. These are just rumors. It's speculation. Okay. But here's the surprise. Taylor has not heard the surprise. Garrett, I, the crew, we all know because we just got off a of FaceTime with a bar stool, and they have some solid news. An interesting partner that might come in the wholesaling game. So some of our dad merch. Costco. Some of our, hang, slow it down. Some of our, yeah, some of our is dad it? merch is rumored and and it's just speculation. This is allegedly, allegedly, uh, allegedly. going to go into Dick's Sporting no shit, and, and Golf Galaxy. Let's go. Let's and die, Garrett, the dude. golf boy said Golf Galaxy's like, it's like, what'd you oh, say? Yeah, it's like an time. adult film store for golfers. Adult film store for golfers. Love that. <laughs> it's an, an adult, adult film, film store, store for, for golfers, golfers and golf golfers? products. And golf <laughs> products. Wait, they want to take our dad merch. And put it in their stores. Yeah, like our dad golf collab that the we day, are. 2023, the greatest year of our the lives. Greatest year of our lives. Oh my God. But dude. it's going to be like uh, allegedly 25 stores, and then you can obviously you can get it online. And we're hoping to do a red ribbon cut at Dick's here in Nashville. Are you serious? That's a self, that's like self proclaimed. No, we're we're just going to grow, happen. we're going to go there and yeah, just. Yeah, we'll just go there and yeah. have a big. But we yeah. need the giant scissors. We need like yeah. ones that are like, we actually need both of us to use it. Yes. It's so heavy and big. But bro. Easy call to arms too. If we shout out one thing on the pod, we'll have 100 people there for our ribbon cutting ceremony. Yes, bro. We'll get try to get Nashville. Like, we're all coming yeah, together to dude, do that's this ribbon sick, cut. Dude. Okay, you know, but how sick nine. is that? It's like, there's a couple. That's unreal. Allegedly, there's a couple polo, there's two polos which the patterns are awesome. There's a golf cover, a club cover, and then there's a, what is it? A, a, a little Q-zip. A little Q-zip with, like, with like a cool design inside the collar. It's, we were all fired up when the phone call yeah, got done. Dude, we're all dapping up. Boys, this year is really shaping up 
shaping up. Dude. What a hell of a day for you to hear that news on top of the teeth. The I fresh know, cut. I know, dude. I am feeling fucking. I am feeling different, dude. <laughs> I am feeling absolutely like different. Things are things are on the way up right now, boys. And you're gonna look spectacular for draft coverage, aren't you? Going to be doing draft yes. coverage this so weekend. For those of you who are watching this episode, this episode comes out tomorrow, which is Thursday, Sunday. NFL Network, I believe the 130 slot to 230 and then 330 to 430. I am doing uh, like a draft analysis, combine analysis at Indianapolis in Lucas Oil Stadium. It'll be as average as it gets, boys and girls, but I will try to be as entertaining as I possibly can be. Who are you going to do it with? I think Deion Dawkins is going to be there. Deion Dawkins, uh, Rich Eisen, our boy Richie will be Ooh. out there. The squad will be out there. And I think, I'm not sure, because for whatever reason, people don't like to tell me shit anymore. Like when I did the uh, the Mega Cast, I, I was going to be a booth, and all of a sudden I was on the field. And so your boy is kind of a, a fly by the seat of his pants kind of dude right now. I think I'm going to be on the field. I think I'm going to be on the field with these dudes. If not, I'll be in the booth with Rich and the boys. I had a nice little suit plan, but it sounds like I'm wearing a, hood, like a, a collared shirt now. But I thought to myself, put a mullet on, dude. Get the energy going, and we're going to have a hell of a time during what is usually people's least favorite time, which is when the O-liner and O-liner are doing the combine. Yes, but we're right. going to have an we're, absolute blast. That's why they're calling the boy in. Hey, it's going to be so energy. much fun. My goal? I'm going to sniff out who that next left tackle for the Tennessee Titans are going to be. Then I'm going to find the best one. You think Tennessee should go left tackle in the first round? Ah, uh, bro, we got so many damn holes. I know, They got bro. so many issues out there. No, no, this is not a shot. This is literally what I'm seeing. What we're all seeing is we're all a little scared of this next NFL season right now. But in Rand, we trust. And Mike Vrabel, we trust. We got to understand that these boys got to go to work. This offseason, make uh, free agency look great. Pay Jeffrey Simmons while also paying other players, getting some studs in there, and then have a hell of a draft. And let's get back to the top of the AFC South, boys. Let's fucking do this. Willow, do this. See, she's. Uh, I can't wait till she, she yells at me. me. She was just like nodding. Yeah, she's like, hell yeah. Why are you hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> but yeah, dude. NFL Network. On Sunday, it's going to be an electric factory. I can't tell you that I'm going to give you the best information you're ever going to get in your life, but I will try to have as much fun as possible, and I hope you can have fun with me too. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's, I can't wait to tune in. It'll be a great time for sure. We're going to have. It's going to be a blast. And while you're there, like, let's start now that is it is a new year. We should start like dialing in when Rich can come on the bus for real. Yeah, that is that is officially it's officially Rich Eisen season. Yeah, I'll, is, I, I will literally talk to him on Sunday. Here's what I'm worried about is there was an opportunity for Rich to come on our podcast in AZ. In AZ. Yeah. And we kind of shut it down. There was one night where I called Rich or I said, hey, I'm, I'm eating dinner. I'm going to call you in a little oh, bit yeah, with Will. Nice. And I never called. So now I've got to do a lot of kind of backpedaling, being like, hey, listen, I know I dropped the ball in the communication standpoint. We didn't want him on the podcast in Arizona. We want him on the actual bus where my beautiful daughter is sitting right now. Yes. But Rich was when he hit the yeah. group chat the next day. He was like, that dinner lasted a little long. I was like, man. Yeah, I dropped the ball on that. But so that I, was a true decision. For, like, it is best that he's in Nashville and he's, he's on the bus. He's got to be on the bus. We could have took the easy way out and got us all together while we were in Arizona, but that's not that's not what the whole chase, that's not what the whole, what is it? What am I trying to say here? That's been the goal from the get-go. Yeah. That's been the goal from the get-go. And Jack's been putting in work. He's at 280-plus days that right now. That is what I can't wait to dive into for yeah. real yeah. and figure out if this has, if the continuity has been there to see if Jack is going to earn himself a Chevy Silverado. Yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Only time will tell. Yep. He says he hasn't missed a day. The fine print of everything right is you cannot miss one day. If you miss yeah. one day, we can be as upset as we want, but... That's what we agreed on, right? That is what the agreement was. Today, you're not going to be upset. You're going to understand you did it to yourself. Yeah. That's I mean, great. And that's all we need to hear. That's all we need to hear. He's a team guy. You got to be able to watch the You know, Jack does do this little thing where he does like just Alvin Kamara, right? Josh Dobbs is on the podcast. He's all of a sudden agreeing that he was an underutilized player. The next week, Derrick Henry's on the podcast. <laughs> Derrick Henry starts looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. His eyes get big like he's on a 99-yard run. And all of a sudden, someone's jumping on the back of Derrick saying whatever to me, dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know that is true, but that, you know. You got to play to your advantage. Yeah, dude. You got to yeah. play to your advantage. Not to play to your advantage. Attaboy, Jack. Your glass, hey, stuff your glasses look cool, too. They do. I don't know whose they are. But, but they, they, and they, they match the little NASCAR. Yeah. Garrett's Garrett's that's what you were going glasses, for. So shout yeah. out to Garrett. Um, and your T-shirt rips, too. Yeah. Shout out. Hey, maybe a little. Uh, I'm 
blanking on the word foreshadowing. Foreshadowing, yes. Foreshadowing, we're back. Maybe Nickelback came on the podcast. Maybe it didn't. Maybe they gave us those shirts. Maybe they're coming here August 1st and we're going to be at the concert. Maybe doing special things. Maybe. You never know. You never know what's going to happen because it's 2023, the best year of Bustin' with the Boys history. It's going to be amazing, boys. I'm. I'm psyched. I was cursed again, but I'm psyched, bro. Is there anything going on out in the world? And I feel like I'm looking at Mitch because I feel like he might know that we should talk about our cover. Should we? Here's what I think we should do before Mitch even says that. Should we release where we have decided we are going for our spring football tour? That is mm. an incredible idea. Dang. I totally, I totally forgot about that. Yes, dude. All right. You want, you want to pull the list up? Yeah, pull the list. All up. All right, and we'll hype it up. We'll hype up each each one. Pull the list up. Now, the spring tour. Here's what is happening on the spring tour. Just like last year, we went to Nebraska, Michigan, and the University of Tennessee. We did four or five interviews. We got in. We got off. With a vlog, we got out. This year, we have expanded the team list to six, actually, now. In uh, five of those locations, we're doing a couple interviews on, you know, at the college we are doing a vlog. We're going to be in the city. We're going to be on campus trying to eat at a staple, touring, whatever. The big addition that we are adding this year, the element. Tell them, Willie. Live shows. Woo! Taylor and I, we're, get, we're at local venue. There will be probably two to 300 spots at each spot that we go to, each city, each campus that we're in. And that'll be, we'll be doing a live show at like 7 o'clock at night. Fans, there'll be tickets, VIP, photos, fun, energy, vibes. You guys know the drill. But with that said, you guys know that we're doing interviews, we're gonna do vlogs, and now we're adding the element of the live show at five campuses. We'll show you, we will release the details of the fun little six spot that we're right. going to. And yeah, because originally we were just gonna do five places. Now some crazy stuff happened where we actually added a six. Yeah. We'll get to that. Dark Horse came in out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, and dude. Something that we could Shout not out refuse. Chaparral High School, dude. Shout out, Shout, Shout out, out Chaparral High School. Bad in place. But. The first date, March 15th. Every one of these dates will be on a Wednesday, and the live show will happen that Wednesday evening. March 15th, the first campus we are going to, the University of South Carolina. Let's, Let's give it up, boys. The Gamecocks. The Big Cox. I think we'll be sitting down with Coach Beamer uh, and uh, Ben Spencer Rattler, Rattler, who was going to go to the NFL draft, decided not to go to the right. NFL draft because he wants to come back and bring them an SEC championship. We'll see. We saw what happened, Jack. We. I don't think you're in a place to talk right now. I was with you that game this year. I don't think I'm with yeah. you so much. March 22nd, the boys on the bus will be in Austin, Texas, at the University of Texas, that burnt orange. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not boomerang, boys. We're horns up right now. We're horns up right now. We are buying into the culture. Hey, McConaughey, we're looking at you, brother. We we're looking you. at you. We would we love, love to have him on the bus. Absolutely love to have him on the bus. Obviously, doing a live show in Austin would be incredible. Now, I am not going to this is a little bit of a speculation march 22nd is the day that we'll be doing our live show we kind of know where the live show is going to be i am under the same impression right now that the joe rogan will also be doing a show in the same place that night yeah is it an opportunity to go on this podcast as you want to have us on this podcast that answer is probably no but is it an opportunity <laughs> for us to push and with the boats moving in the right directions, because that's when you do it, boys. That's when you fucking do it. We get after it. Or people who are listening that might be thinking about, oh, I want to go to the boys' show now, and then I'll hit Rogan after. If yeah. we just get a little for the boys' chant going <laughs> while Joe, like when he comes yeah. on, so he knows, like, what's going on here? Well, oh, can the you bus. Pass my daughter, my daughter's water to me because I got a little tickle in the back of the throat here. March 29th, we will be attending the rival. Oh, the greatest rivalry in all of sports. We will be going to the Ohio State University. Could have just Ohio State University. Could have just it is Ohio the Ohio State. State University. We will be in Columbus. Columbus, Ohio, boys. Yes. Going into enemy territory to see what they're really cooking up over there. They've lost two to Michigan. They can't seem to win a Big Ten championship in the 20s. <laughs> We're going to find out yeah. why. I want to sit down with Ryan Day and find out why are you one and two against the University of Michigan and the last coach to do that, Jonathan Cooper, in 1989, went one and two. He also ended up going one, ten, and one. That's just a little stat for you guys. Love a good history how lesson. Is he, how is he going? going to get over that hurdle do i want him to absolutely not but do i want to find out a little information maybe report back to the boys i'm not saying i am going to i'm just saying maybe yeah, yeah. jot down a couple of things i am this is probably the one i'm most fired up for oh i'll say which yeah. um if we got to pick one player who do we think it would be one would be marvin harrison jr C cj left yeah marvin harrison jr is the one cj stroud he's gone he's he's going in the draft 
Um, I wonder how that will cook up with their pro days. If we're in line, you never know. You never know. But I would love to. I would love to meet with uh, Ryan Day. You I know, think Ohio, Ohio State came out of nowhere because Brian Hartline, Coach Hartline, he's the a wide, wide receiver, receiver coach, coach for Ohio State, and was OC a now. stud when he was a receiver for uh, the Dolphins. Yeah. Yeah, because he was on my fantasy team one year. Hey, shout out the boy. He DM'd and was like, yo, you guys can come to Ohio State. We'll hook it up. We'll make sure you have a good time. And I was that like, That fires Shit. me up, dude, because we did talk about that a little bit at the Super Bowl, how cool it would be to go to Columbus. Yes. So, like, check it out. Now, I was in Columbus for college game day for the game, and I thought to myself, I'm literally going to get assaulted here, and I'm going to deserve every part of it. If you guys don't know about my history, <laughs> your boy. You got some history there. Ohio State fan when I was a senior in high school or college. And so now I thought I was about to get minds people were incredibly nice all the rumors i was told about they people would be like fuck you taylor love your podcast dude actually keep going sorry willow i shouldn't have cursed but you got the headphones on you didn't hear me one bit good dad good dad go ahead willie oh you ready yeah april 5th at the boys are going down to the bayou going to louisiana state university we're talking friends we're talking mics we're talking bogeys, even though I heard bogeys closed down. That's a huge bummer. We were doing the live show at Fred's. We're doing a live show at Fred's. Shout out to Fred's. When I was there my junior year of college, I went down there. I wasn't allowed in because I was wearing a, a plain colored t-shirt and visible tattoos with earrings. You guys said I couldn't come in. Looks like we're in a full circle situation here. We'll love to sit down with Brian Kelly and learn where you learned that accent in such a quick pace. Coming from, coming from Notre Dame to LSU. If I was going to be an individual going back to high school and I couldn't go to the University of Michigan, the school I would want to go to is LSU. I am so fired up to see Mike the Tiger maybe catch a baseball game because their baseball games fill out, brother. It's an, abs- it's an open container law there, too. New Orleans is its own world. It's a third world country with a first world mindset, boys. We're getting after it every single day. That's true. Shout That's out fair. Louisiana. Fair. They absolutely when you rip. that airport, it smells like, you know. Ba- have you, have you flown to Baton Rouge? Good. Yeah, when I was, you know, a cup of coffee with the Saints. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you want to know a little fun stat about your boy? I do want to know Back a fun stat day, about your boy. 10 years old, went to a baseball camp at LSU. No way. Got to read the difference between a four seam and a two seam. And your boy went 19 for 20 when that pitcher Are was throwing kidding? at me. Yeah, bro. On saying out loud with the, you know. Not to brag. Think, think. Yeah, not to brag. Dude. 10 years old, LSU Will Compton is really him, and it's about time we start giving him the respect he yeah, deserves. I appreciate that. Hey, um, well, before we go off of LSU, I would love to start a personal campaign. If we can get <laughs> Livy Dunn on the pod, I think that we're going to send into new heights. I don't know if y'all know who Livy is. Yes, Livy no. Dunn. She's 20 years old, Jack. <laughs> yeah. But... That's all. We're trying to get Jack a uh, oh, date. Pretty. We're trying to get Jack, Jack a date. Yeah, she's pretty, Jack. I'm not trying to have a date. I just know she has a huge, you know, engagement. Oh, you're trying to have us do an interview with her. Who knows? (laughs) 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 We'll do an interview with you. Maybe you can fall in love with her. Who knows what's going to happen? What we're trying to swing for. What we're trying to swing (laughs) for the live event. The boy playoff Lenny Fournette, dude. Yo, Lenny owes us that private jet down there too. So Lenny, we'll be looking to you to show us that good food too. He said, "What do you say?" He he said he had been back in a minute. That's in New Orleans. We were going back and Different forth. Places. I was like, hey, do you have the same number? He had one digit off, but he sent me his number. I texted him, like, hey, this is uh, this is Will Compton. And I'm like, I have a question for you. He FaceTimes me right away. No way. He FaceTimes me. Bro, and Lenny that, really is like and him, he just, he did it. He asked about you. He said, how my boy doing? Oh, yeah, your boy's doing great. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's flourishing. He's doing a great job. April 12th. April 12th. We will be going to... Boulder, Colorado, the Yay! University of Colorado. Yay! We're going to get this rivalry started. Not started. We're going to reboot this rivalry between Colorado and Nebraska. Nebraska. Get some shit talking. Go and sit down with Dion. Prime time. Hey, hey, kids in, in the room. Kids in the room. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I think this is perfect. Will's you, doubling down. you announcing the last one. And I think it fits because shout out Chaparral High School. Yes. Chaparral? Yeah, Chaparral. So originally we were going to do five. You heard that earlier before we started this very long-winded announcement for where we are going for our spring football tour. Coach Dillingham. Y'all know who that is? <laughs> He was, I believe, two years older than me at Chaparral High School. He is now the head coach of the ASU, I think, Sun Devils. ASU Sun Devils. Your boy got offered from them. I got an offer from them in high school. I'm just going to say. Charlie Regal, who was my head coach in high school, is now a special teams coach there. They hit us up during the Super Bowl week. They said, hey, we would love to sit down with you guys, maybe do an episode. I thought that'd be a phenomenal idea. However, they reached out to us at the Super Bowl. They said, hey, we'd love to sit down with you guys. We ended up not working out because we had a jam-packed schedule. It was unbelievable. I was gay for 72 hours. It was a wild situation. Now, fast forward, fast forward, the boys call us up and say, hey, we want 
not only you guys to be the coaches of each spring game team, what we want, hold on, baby, what we want is for you and Will Compton to be the head coaches of each spring team, and we're going to call it the Bussin' Spring Game. That is incredible. <laughs> that's, a, that's an opportunity. A, a D1 Power 5 school has asked the boys to literally be head coaches for a day. That being said, that'll be going down that week. So it'll be a lot of fun things. Obviously, Arizona's an incredible place. A lot of fun times there to be had. We are going to have such a great time. And that's why we had to add a sixth location to our bus and spring tour. Not doing a live show that week. That's the only spot we're that's not doing a live show. We're not doing a live show. Yeah. Is it, a lot of shows are a lot of work, dude, and they cause a lot of anxiety in the boy. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, I hope I hope we just don't let y'all down. You can come enjoy an episode with us. I think it's going to be amazing. It is going to be so much fun. New places, new friends, new experiences. This is going to be an incredible spring an tour. Incredible Bus spring week for spring us. Spring tour, dude. It's going to be amazing. With that being said, I think we should take a break. I think we should go to our tier talk next. We can do best casino games. Hey, we will be in Vegas next. Oh, dude. One more announcement for the boys out there. Yeah, that's going to basically kick off the spring that we're about to have. Yeah. Next Thursday, the boys are going to Las Vegas, Nevada for work, boys and girls. Dana White, the episode you're about to watch, was incredible. He truly is an, aw an awesome dude. I enjoyed every single bit about him. I enjoy how his mind works in the business standpoint of understanding how to acquire the PSL and knowing that how our little brains work nowadays with all the stuff we got going on on the screens, how we computerize and take down information into our own heads. He bought PSL. They're having their first live event this next coming Saturday. So not the Saturday that's up next, but the one after that. We're leaving Thursday. I believe we're doing interviews. We're doing UFC media day, maybe a little dinner with the boy Dana. And then we are going to be at the first PCL event and PSL PSL. I say PCL. Oh, uh, the first PSL event with Dana White. We could not be more grateful or excited to head over to Sin City and enjoy that. That is going to be amazing. So I had to get that out. Hey, we're doing tear talk. Um, who's going to be the presenter? Jack. Are you guys going to go one at a time? It's obviously going to be Jack. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, best casino games. Honorable mention. Got to throw down the slots. Every now and again, to get lucky, throw in a dollar, push it up to 100, maybe 500, then lose it all. Coming in at number three, we are doing roulette. Love a game of chance. Throw down a couple on this, on that. I was actually in Lake Tahoe last weekend when my buddies put down on the double zero green and hit it. No way. And he had like $30 on it, ended up winning like 700 you can't beat that kind of energy. I'm pretty too. sure it's more than 700, it brother. Split. It was split. So it was oh, one got to you. 17 to 1 to 35. So you had both. But yeah, when someone hits something big on there, everybody's jumping. Hey, hey. Can't beat it. Uh, tier 2, Blackjack. Love it. Can't beat it. Usually getting beat by the dealer, but it's still fun to be there. You're always next to some like old dude smoking a cigarette who like really knows the game well. Um, but number one uncontested is Craps. Like you said earlier, the social aspect, like the team environment of it, it, you can't, it's just so much fun. When one person's winning, almost everyone's winning, unless you're that asshole paying the don't come line. Don't, yep, don't yeah. pass line. Yeah, well, it says don't come on the thing, so. It says don't pass, there's the come line in front of that. It's okay. Come, come, come on Anyways, the kick drum. Craps, number one, without a doubt, when everybody's winning, you know, you can't beat that kind of team atmosphere, so that is our three. Well. For words? Yeah. Almost. <laughs> Hyphenated right there. Similar. But, but you know, yes, very similar. <laughs> I, I know, I thought he was going to do. <laughs> but, yeah. but different? But. <laughs> yeah. uh, you want me to go or you want to go? Uh, look, go ahead. At the end of the day, I Jack you. had a I great... Jack had a great list and, and also explained a lot of the uh, intricate details of why they're all great. My uh, honorable mention is going to be Texas Hold'em. Never played it at the casino, but loved it in high school. Way too intimidated to play at the casino. Loved it in high school. Got the whole set for Christmas when it was hot. World Series of Poker. You got the whole set with the chips and everything else. You'd have the boys over. You'd do $20 buy-ins. That all time Texas Hold'em, love it. Never again. Never played at the casino. Too intimidated. Loved it in high school. Still would play it to this day. It's a good game. My tier three is going to be craps. The reason craps is not higher, 
you guys, all the whole social, the team aspect. You want to hear it? You want to hear it? You did. You got them all right. All right. You got my three right. Same as around Jax. Same as probably most people. But you're right. All right. You want to hear me say? You want to break me down? You're right. Crafts is tier three. Hang on, Willow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Tier two. Roulette. Love roulette. We love a game of chance. Roulette's actually my first love at the casino. Because, you know, it's something you just go over there. And I'm an outside player. I don't play the numbers. I think that stuff's stupid. You take way too much time trying to spread everything around. Your lucky numbers, your birthdays, your this, your that, your dog when he died. Um, but roulette. Love play the outside. Evens, odds, black, red. Big black and big odd guy. Just put that out there. You guys should wait take that it. advice. Gotta wait for it. Gotta wait for it? No, don't touch that. What? You, is that it? Reel it in. I got my tier one to go. Okay. It's the biggest one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, that's on me, dude. That's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll move it away. I'll move it away. <laughs> um, tier one. What are you doing, Daddy? What are you doing? My tier one. And it happened because of the boys' trip. Oh, no. It happened because of the boys' trip. It happened because of the boys trip in Vegas that we had not too long ago. Blackjack, dude. When we had that little room, the little high rollers area, yeah. before the high rollers actually came in on the weekend, when we had that Wednesday, Thursday, you, you remember what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And we were just vibing. You get a good dealer. You get a good group of guys. You're yelling. You're having your own jargon. We're talking football terminology the whole time. Remember, show me the back door. Tickle me in the back door. Yeah. Blackjack, dude. That is my tier one. Um, and that, that concludes my tier talk. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Boris? Not a lot of energy behind that. Yep. I don't know how to read that. Sure. Simple. <laughs> what do you call you Simple Jack? Spot on. I made it. Same. Nice. All right, I like my TikTok right now. I have no <laughs> idea. My, my daughters are taking time off at this point. Listen. <laughs> My tier three is going to go to roulette. Do I love roulette? No, but I did refer to the roulette table as the ATM when I was playing. Your boy would get down in the blackjack a little bit. I say, hey, boys, I hit the, uh, hit the ATM real quick. Go over. Quick thousand on black. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Now, all of a sudden, we're back on the uh, the blackjack table. Oh, oops, oops. My tier two <laughs> is going to go out to crafts. I wish it was my tier one because I love the social aspect of the game. When somebody goes on a roll, that is tier one. When somebody's ripping numbers left, right, and center, you know that everyone is just juiced. And that one... Handshakes, chest bumps. Yeah, that yeah, one a-hole that sits there and does the do not pass line, or as Jack likes to put it, do not come line. Like, that guy's the guy we're all fighting against. We're all getting it. You put it in, you get a set, you get a six or an eight. Now you can uh, five times your bet. Then you're li living on the table. Hey, let me get a hard eight over here. People are talking. Chips are flying. Dice are rolling. It is such an electric time. This is why it did not make my tier one. Because boys, when it goes bad, it goes bad fast. And you lose a lot of money really quickly. My tier one is going to go because of this boys trip we had. There is nothing better than five of you and your closest friends sitting at a table and slowly putting together cards to equal 21. And just all of you fighting against one individual with smart ass comments they make every 15 minutes about when they win, they have in their back pocket because they've been doing it for so long. And the thing that I hate the most about blackjack, how do those dudes count the cards so damn fast? They're flipping them things over and they get like a three and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to win. So you double whatever you have. I could have 14. I'm going to double because I know this person is going to bust right now. All of a sudden, it's 3, 6, seven, uh, 17, uh, 19, 21. Or, yeah, obviously, I have to stop at 17, but you know what I'm saying. They get, they, they get to 21, and it's just like, how are they counting these cards that fast? But, boys, when you win, when a 10 hits, not when an ace hits on your first card, a 10 hits, and you say, honey, it could be male or female giving you those cards, and you say, honey, give me that back door loving. You start tapping the table, the boy starts standing up, feelings are starting to rise, energies get up, you can feel your blood pressure, it's truly through the roof, and you hit that ace piece, there is an electricity that goes off in your head that is comparable to nothing else than just, I would assume, bank robbers stealing from a bank, because guess what? We're coming, we have work to do, but we're taking from you. I always go to Vegas, and I say, I'm, gonna I'm willing to lose this much, Screw that, boys and girls. I'm going in there to win and to win big. I can't wait for next week. It's going to be an electric factory. My daughter is doing such a phenomenal job now. Thank you so much. That is my tear talk.
Decent. It was the same exact one as you as well. Decent. <laughs> For the teeth. Teeth, look at her teeth. <laughs> Descriptive. Energy. Electric. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. It's a great word. That's a great one. Great word. Good one. I don't think there's anything else left to say. You guys hey, all stop going around and trying to massage. Oh yeah, dude. Stop going around and trying to massage us just to throw you a chip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It is I'm nothing about- grimier than walking up to a table, watching some dude with a chair back on his stomach as he's laying there just getting destroyed by some petite Asian lady. And one of our boys was doing it. And it's just like, hey, like, like sweating. At the, at the table? At, yeah, the, at table, the table, bro. You know, they're massaging. And it's you funny when your boys tips. are doing it, but you walk by a hairy, uh, a hairy, you know, bald Russian cat with a jumpsuit on. It's like, <laughs> buddy, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in the riffraff. You're in the you're in the regular tables hanging out and you're getting a massage. Like that's it's creepy, creepy central. Creepy central. And they just grunt back there and they hold that five five dollar chip and they kind of just don't even look at him. They just give it to <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, just keep it going. Mm, bro. And that's what the, that the boy was doing. Not for me. Do not ask to massage me. Yeah. I, I'm I'm working. I'm in business. Don't give me a drink. We are in business. We are in business. The Running boys. low, hit the ATM, the yep. roulette table. Boom. Double it ASAP. But you lose it, that's when you got to think about, you know, walking away. Yeah, you got you to gotta walk away. You have to walk away. Dana White, incredible episode. He, he's, a, he's a stud, man. He's a stud. He's a stud. Great business insight, yes. too. He breaks down how he even got the PSL legal in Nevada, working through that process, why he decided to do it. The guy is a stud, man. He's a billionaire for a reason. We are we are very lucky to have him on our podcast. Hopefully, a lot more times in the future as well. Hopefully, we can get him on the actual bus and have some. Have oh, him I think I think that's that's in the future. Yeah, we got to get on with his 10x guy. Yeah, because he's see that right there. It's gonna get a whole a, lot bigger. Yeah, we had to like basically cater in some keto stuff because he's on keto. Yeah, yeah. Portillos, I believe is what it was. No free shout out, Portillos. Subscribe, like. Hit the little bell to turn on your notifications for YouTube if you're watching right now. Comment, do that whole deal. Without further ado, Dana White, probably after this ad read. Whistle pig, piggyback, busting with the boys whiskey, boys. It is incredible. Keep buying it up. Keep buying it up. You keep doing that. We can keep doing more fun stuff for you. Like we said, this is the number one unemployed NFL podcast in the entire world. Yes. We need you. We got to have you, dude. We got, we're like Cold Stone Creamer. We got to have it right now. So please, God, buy that, buy the merch. And then Dick's Sporting Goods, dude. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Golf Galaxy. Wow. (laughs) So do it all. We need it. Do this for us so we can do more for you. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Enjoy the episode. How fucking fascinating, though, at the time when social media exploded for, for these kids that were into it and, and it actually became... Because when Twitter first came out, I was one of the first people that, that was on Twitter. And, and doing, I was doing, like, video blogs back then Yeah. Uh, for, uh, that, that we were uploading on YouTube. And I remember at the time, like, you couldn't hire anybody to come. Nobody knew what the fuck they were doing. Right. Right? I mean, and then, boom, within, you know, like, five or six years, there were, there were kids everywhere, you know, turning into stars on, on social media. Yeah, people are like, yeah, YouTube, out. Like, Twitter, oh, all that stuff. And also, it's got to help the entertainment industry so much. Like, social media and the UFC. I think UFC uses the social media better than probably any yes. other, like, even better, better than the NFL, better than baseball, better than hockey. Thanks. Like, it just seems like... You guys are understanding the formula of how to get people engaged in what's going on, playing the game, getting the villain, getting the hero, bringing them together. It seems like you got a, a legit, well, well, obviously you have a legit thing going on, but it's like killing I, I would love to tell you it's because, you know, I was brilliant and everything else, but I hated the media so fucking bad. I hated them so bad that when you told me, wait a minute, I can cut the middleman out and I can go directly to the fans, fucking I'm all in on that. Yeah. I loved it. So... I was infatuated with it immediately mm-hmm. because I hated the media. You, I was going to say, you jump around on all the pod, like you, you're in like the podcast game. You're like a guest who will go like Nelk Boys, like I'm Rogan, everybody. You yeah, go on impulsive. all the different podcasts. Yeah, impulsive. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, uh, I, I love that. I, I love uh, talking to these guys. All the mainstream media are exactly the same. I mean, I was just doing, uh, <clears throat> you know, the radio row over it the NFL, which I've been doing for a long time. And it's just when you, when you get in with guys like you guys and, and guys that are doing podcasts and, and, and these kids that are doing things on social media, it's, uh, it's real. 
not fucking bullshit. It's not a bunch of fucking uh, these jerk offs who who clickbait and 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 do all this. I, I just, I mean, you start to look now like like McAfee. Yeah, look at how McAfee has blown up, right? And he's getting Aaron Rodgers and, and, and these big guys because they'd rather go to him and have a real conversation with him than these guys in the media. But you know, the unique thing about Pat McAfee, in the NFL, there's like opportunities. Like you can do like shadowing or do skill building kind of things with the with networks. But you have to like kind of put in a resume, see if they want you to do it or not. Pat was one of those guys that put in the resume every single year, the whole eight years he was playing and got turned down every single time. When as after he retired tried to go do something more mainstream and they're like, no, we're, we're good on that. Fast forward to now and you see these bigger, the NBCs, the CBSs, the NFL networks, the ESPNs are trying to find ways to be more like Pat. More 100%. casual, the suit and tie thing is dying. Mainstream media as stand we knew it. Podcast. Stand up podcasts. Stand up podcasts. The mainstream media as it was five to 10 years ago is dying. It is, it's not dying, it's transitioning to something that needs to feel more real for the, for the consumer that's taking it in on a day-to-day basis. A hundred percent. And, and, and they're all so woke, you know what I mean? That yeah. it's, it's like you, you go in to do a sports interview and they're interviewing you like they're fucking 60 minutes. Well, they already have the story kind of written and they're that's trying to the ask you, they're trying to the ask problem. the questions that's going to fill those parts of the story, which is like why the, the, the division between like the person getting interviewed, whether it's at a press conference or something else, I feel like that's like where that hate stems from because you kind of already know when somebody's asking you that question, it's like they're going to write some story that's going to have this kind of headline already on there. Like you guys have 100%. already percent There's just no want, doubt They about just want to get something out of it. They want Dana White to say something that's going to make him or somebody look dumb and then they can take that out and then yeah. get people to watch it more and more. And even if you don't give them what they want, they have some clickbait title that has nothing to do with the right? story. It's yeah. like, we do that. We do that. It's not even a part of the story. We, we'll, we'll find one with Dana. We, yeah, we're gonna find a clickbait title. Like, yeah, something. But speaking of new content, uh, speaking of content, being in the content game and doing well with that, the Ultimate Fighter is coming back. Mm. Michael Chandler, Conor McGregor. Yep. Talk about that a little bit, like getting Conor, getting him in the house and doing kind of that reality show because that that show is all time. That show is all time. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, you know, it's all about timing with the, when these things happen. When there's a new season of The Ultimate Fighter, we're always looking for uh, who's busy, who's got fights going on, whatever. And then we look at who's available and what fights make sense and wh- who, who would make sense to coach. And this one just, just landed on our lap. This year, Connor is coming back. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about Connor and Chandler. You know, they're both in the right place at the right time. And, and at the end of the day, you know they'll both be great coaches. And even more importantly, you know, that fight will be absolute and total violence. <laughs> yeah. It will I'm, be, I'm it'll, it will not go the out. distance. Yeah, I agree. It will not go I the agree. distance. And it's a, it's a funny thing because these are two guys that have shown interest in fighting each other. Yet I think they're, we'll, we'll see when they get together, but there's a level of respect, respect between these two too. Mm-hmm. Do you, is there a point though? Like when you go do the ultimate fighter and you have a polarizing figure like Conor McGregor, a guy like Michael Chandler who has put himself as the all-American boy. Like he is well-spoken, doesn't really curse, like family man. He's got that vibe to him. Is there a way you guys sit down and be like, hey, here's kind of the rule. Like let's, let's, no, no rules, but let's have a guideline when it comes to this, like Connor, do your best not to cross these X, Y, and Z lines. Or yeah. you kind of just let him figure out them for, for themselves. That's not the vibe with him. That's really who he is. He's, he's, he's such a good person. Uh, Michael, I, I like him a lot and I have a lot of respect for him, but we don't ever tell these guys what to do or what to say or how to act or whatever. It's what makes the, it's the reason we're in 30 something seasons of the, of the ultimate fighter. When they get in there, whatever happens, happens and we film it. That's just the way it goes. There's yeah. no, there's no guidance. There's no, any of that stuff. <clears throat> um, and, and it's, it, it's what makes each season very unique because just when you think you've seen it all, something new happens every yeah. season. It's going to be Pretty incredible. Cool. It is going to be cool. When you look yeah, at and this is the first Season that's actually been on ESPN, the network. Usually they were on Plus since we did the ESPN deal. Yeah. This year it'll be on the network. So. Big numbies. It'll be big. Big it'll numbies. Be massive. Yeah. I mean, Connor Cohen. Which will make the fight even more league. massive. Yeah. Yeah. The fight's going to be, yeah, people getting to watch them on a day to day basis just chirping at each other over and over again. I mean, Connor's got a silver tongue, and I'm excited to see what cheeky things uh, Mike's got playing. We are, boy, we were talking before. Boy. That's our boy. Yeah, Mike's Mike our lives boy. in Nashville. We are rooting for Mike. But I got into the UFC with uh, uh, Richie Incognito. Do you ever met Richie? He's a, no, he's but a, I know he's exactly a, who he is. You know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, he ended with the Dolphins, right? He played. Uh, with no, he Raiders. ended with the Raiders. He was on the Dolphins. Oh, he was, he was on the, the Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins, Bills, that. Raiders. 
And I met him training out of Exos here in Arizona. And he's like, let's go to uh, a, a UFC fight. And I was like, I've never been to a UFC fight. And he's like, let's go to this Conor McGregor fight. It was the first Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz. And I went there and he's like, start watching videos on Conor. And I was like, this fucking guy, <laughs> there's a reason why he's made so much damn money. And it's got, that had to be like an incredible like, golden goose for you guys for a while but is there ever a point when you have like a guy like conor mcgregor and it's great for the ufc but then he gets so baked where he almost calls the shots which might hurt negotiations when it comes to him fighting in the ufc he can kind of do whatever he wants no he, he he's a smart dude and and you know um he's actually been one of the easiest guys to deal with really honestly. yeah listen conor mcgregor would be perfect if he showed up everywhere on time i mean if he did that he'd literally be the perfect <laughs> yeah, guy he just to work doesn't with. give a fuck yeah, it's just, you know, it's all part of his thing, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, we have a great relationship and he's been he's been great to work with. And and uh, you know, the, the the reality is it doesn't have to be a superstar fighter. It can be one of our employees or whatever, because it happened during the sale when when, when we sold to uh, Endeavor. Once you get to a certain level financially, mm. you know, we we had guys that work for us that 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 had some points in the company. They retired. They're gone. They, they don't work anymore. You know, as mm -hmm. soon as the, the company sold, they were gone. And and it's like, uh, whether you have Conor McGregor, look at John Jones. You know, there's a lot of talk, a lot of shit talk that we don't pay our fighters. Mm -hmm. John Jones hasn't fought in three years. Yeah. You know what I mean? How many people at, at John Jones age can just take three years off and say, eh, Not a whole maybe lot I'll come back, maybe, maybe I won't. You know what I mean? People can't do that. Yeah, there's, yeah. And there's, there's, there's a lot. Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo won a title. I think he defended it once or twice and hasn't fought since. Why do you think there's I mean, so it's just part of the money. When, when the money comes Jason, along, get, and, and, and when you're in a sport like this where you got to jump up every day and get punched in the face, you know, once the money comes in, Amanda Nunes, mm. destroying people. I mean, out Hello. there knocking, you know, uh, you know, she, she fights here and there. She, she's, they, yeah. you know, they all got plenty of money and they don't need to do it anymore. So it's just it's the nature of the business. Big, the pig gets fatter, dude. The pig does it's like it's fatter. like the NFL. You get you get paid financially. A lot of guys like to get a little bit yeah, worse. Like but a the spectrum, slower, yeah, it's just sooner it's rather than difference. yeah. And guys like the one percent of the NFL, and then right. there's the guys that are trying to grind it out on a day to day basis. Right. Why do you think the UFC gets so much flack for not paying their fighters? Because I don't tell anybody what they get paid. I don't tell anybody what they get paid, and guess what? Neither do the fighters. There's yeah. no gag order in place. It, these fighters can come out and say what they say exactly what they make. Yeah. I just had a I just had a situation recently. And it was, it, I'll tell you who it was. It was Paulo Costa. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he's a fucking lunatic. He acts like a lunatic. And uh, he came out publicly and kind of said what we, what we offered him. Yeah. It was the furthest fucking thing from the truth. Really? It wasn't true. And that, this was a while ago. And I, I, this is the first time I've even talked about it. But it's just an example See, these guys will say stuff like that because they know I won't talk about it publicly because yeah. I really don't give a shit. You know, all these people that, that come out and say, oh, the UFC doesn't pay the fighters and they only pay this percentage of the fucking this, that, and everything else. We got an awful lot of people who sit out and, you know, don't. And, and, and he recently came out about an offer we made and it was the furthest thing from the truth. When you're sitting there and you're seeing guys like that say numbers that aren't real, that are obviously way lower than you actually offered. Right. Them, what makes you not bite your tongue? Because there has got to be a level of being a human being like, whoa, 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 we, we do right by our guys, right. but what's the deal? Like, but, like, but, the, but when you look at it, mm. look at how long, I've been in business for 23 years. How many guys have left? I just did a new A-fight deal with John Jones. Man, that's Who was cool. sitting out over money issues. I just mm. did a new A-fight, I just did a new eight-fight deal with Sugar Sean O'Malley. Um, and the list goes on and on. How many guys, the, the, the guys that leave are the guys that, um, we're okay with them leaving. Yeah. You know what I mean? I understand the guys that. who leave are the guys that we're, we're okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, recently, the most recent that, that, and probably the only guy, I mean, I did deals with Tito Ortiz when we fucking hated each other. Chuck Liddell, who was the biggest star on the planet. We always got deals done. Brock Lesnar. We got deals done. Yeah. You never heard any of these people Dog. complaining about their money, right? Everybody wants more money. 
That's the, you guys want more money. You guys aren't being paid enough. I guarantee if we hey, sat here. Or Noy. <laughs> yeah. And you hear my guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want more money. In we do. In human nature, everybody wants more money. And I don't feed into the bullshit. I don't feed into the. Uh, the Jake Paul stuff. Well, the, well the, yeah, the Jake Paul. Who, who, <laughs> well, yeah. that's, that's something that's small, but it's like it's like the viral. It's like a viral. No, no, no you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It lives in the world you know, we live in. Yeah, he 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 keeps playing that whole thing. You know, uh, oh, we'll, we'll do right. We'll thrill we'll treat you guys. How many guys have left and went with Jake Paul? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. How many guys went? Yeah, let's go with Jake Paul and fucking. You know, he's gonna pay us. Yeah, right? it's just it's it's all bullshit. It's all this narrative that I don't play into. I, I you know the guys. Who fight here know, know that they, that they've been taken care of, and you know, and and it's one of these systems where the guys who actually bring all the value are the ones who, who make all the money, yeah. you know. Um, and the guys who don't, when you when you talk about, you know, they always talk about this this pay disparity between boxing and UFC. Yeah, there's there's fucking like a handful of guys in boxing that make shitloads of money. The rest of the guys make nothing. And that's not the Fresh case. And clawing. With, for, we, yeah, we've got 800 long. guys under contract. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a lower level guy coming in, you work your way up. But these, these, these kids are all making really good money. Who are some of the uh, harder fighters to deal with? Who are some of the fighters that are tough to deal with like, when you are doing some of these negotiations? Like John Jones, he's been out of the game for three years over money stuff. He was loud about it for a while. Yeah. Now you say you just got a, a, yeah, a, the, an eight-fight deal. Like, who are some guys who are tough to kind of— Yeah, it's not that John's with. difficult to, to deal with. Um, it, it's, it's more about when these guys hear some of these boxing numbers. First of all, most of these boxing guys that, that you hear that make all this fucking money, they're all in lawsuits. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson's in a lawsuit right now. For, for for a fight that he didn't get paid for him here in Wilder is probably really? about to be in a lawsuit here. Yeah, these guys all get in lawsuits because they never get paid. All these guys that I do deals with, they sign contracts. Mm -hmm. And this is a fact. Not only do I pay them what they're contracted to make, I actually pay them more than they're contracted to make. What, what makes you pay them more, more than what they were contracted to make? What, so. what in, uh, makes you want to pay these guys more if they have a contract? Yeah. Like as a business, as an owner of a business, why would you sit there and go, I'm going to pay this guy more than his contract says? I would call it incentives and bonuses because we, yeah. we do these, these, these post-fight bonuses. Mm -hmm. If your fight was unfucking believable and you blew us away, yeah. you know, there's usually four guys on the card that make $50,000 more. And the rest of the card, we, we throw them some more money too. So everybody on the card makes more money than they were actually contracted to make. That's a fact. And yeah, there's no reason for me to... I think you're wrong. My first time <laughs> meeting fact. you. My first, I literally feel like right now I'm sitting here and be like, I just agree with everything you said because I have no idea. Now, if we were talking to mainstream media guys, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said one fucking word of what I just said to you guys here you're today. You're a good man for that, and I appreciate it's that. Just, I, I, I don't play these little fucking pussy games that they try to play with me, and, and that's what drives them crazy. And, you know, so they can write all the negative stories they want mm -hmm. and, and put, put the headlines up there. I don't know if it gets some more traffic or what it does, but... It's all bullshit at the end of the day. Yeah, and I feel like this whole this whole game and, and is about relationships. The end of the day is, this is my company. Who the fuck are you to tell me how to pay my people? Yeah. And if you don't like it, there's no barrier to entry. Go start your own MMA organization and pay them whatever you want. Many people have done it. Yeah. And it hasn't turned out too well for them. You no, know, you've we've run a real you've business. Cornered here. the market. Yeah. You have cornered that market. Of, we uh, we we run arts. a real business. It's it's in it's unreal, and I wish I knew. Until something might happen with like Live Golf. You never know what they're doing across the across the pond. Yeah, and and you know what I'm saying how PGA was going in. Uh, what well, it's Live, right? Live comes in, just starts throwing these crazy crazy numbers at people. Get people out mm -hmm. of the yeah. tour. Yep, like that's that would true. be the only scenario where you could see something. <clears throat> yeah. Happen. So you have you have all. Here's the other thing though. You come out and you pay a guy like, and I'm not gonna act like I'm educated on this because I'm not. I don't know a lot about it. I've heard of it, but I don't know the ins and outs of it. But um, you take a guy, you guys, for instance, I'll, I'll use you guys as an example. I come out and I pay you guys $350 million to do, the, to do the same podcast, mm -hmm. right? Once you get that kind of money, it's fucking hard, you know, it's hard to to get people incentivized to get out and actually fucking work and, 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 to, and to grind and, and to... And to Help build, you know, you guys are part of Barstool Sports and part of building them into, you know, a massive sports brand. Mm. What's the incentive there when you make that kind of money? 
it, there's not a lot of incentive. Now let's take it to to another level. When you when you are a, a fighter who gets paid to get punched in the fucking face every day. You know, Conor McGregor is a perfect example. John Jones is a perfect example. Amanda Nunes is a perfect example. Um, Ronda Rousey is a great example. I could go on and on for days about the people who've made massive money in this sport. You get to a point where you're like, okay, I achieved what I wanted to achieve here. Right, you got what you needed. Like the, the chip on the shoulder does very famous. dwindle. I became a world champion mm. and have a shitload of money. What's next? Yeah. So right. what do you think makes John Jones and McGregor come back and want to continue to fight when you are, when you do have Well, I think that? what happens is you, you, you get this, this level of success and this level of uh, financial security where, you, I mean, you guys just said it five minutes ago. You, almost, you get to call your own shots now. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take three years off. When I start to feel the itch again, I'll, I'll come back. Or I won't, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you have that financial freedom to do it. Either. Or if I want to jump in and pick up a quick fucking $25, $30 million, uh, I'll pop back in when I feel like it. When, when yeah. you know? If you have the ability to do that, yeah. It is just crazy to look at a guy like Connor and like, 2018, he's gone like one in four, whatever, whatever the number is. It hasn't been like a great record since right. then. Right. He's got proper twelve. He's got all these other businesses. He's killing it. He can make a, he can make a million dollars just going to a, some billionaire's birthday party for an hour. Yep. And you think like, what what makes you want to keep coming back to such a violent sport, the most violent sport there is? And that's a, that's a great point too, because when you think about our sport, um, our fan base accepts losing more than other sports do because... Yeah, I wonder why that is. Because there's so many different ways to win and so many different ways to lose in this sport, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you're actually... Our, our fighters are, are looked at on more of like an Arturo Gotti type level. Like Arturo Gotti was uh, losing these fights but kept signing these big HBO deals because everybody loved the way he fought and that he was such a dog and would go out and give it everything he had. And that's kind of the, the, you know, you lose four or five in a row in a boxing, in boxing, you're fucking done. Dude. You ain't yeah. making any more big money fights. Um, but here, the fan base uh, um, forgives losing because. I mean, it's similar with like Chandler. Yeah. You know, like Chandler's won. I mean, how many fights did he have since he signed? Like, I think he's got like he's an Arturo like, Gotti. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't, yeah. He hasn't won he's all of them. Perfect example, exactly. Yeah, he, but like, he goes out there yeah. like a Rottweiler, but he's out there it's fucking. Like after the last it. fight, it's like he lost, but he also won. Yeah. In a weird you're, way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Think about this. So every Saturday night, I have to convince you guys to not go out, uh, not go to dinner with your girl, not go to a movie, not do this, not do that. Stay home and watch fights. Mm. So when you do, you better have some holy shit moments yeah. or you're going to turn off your TV and be pissed <laughs> off. Right. Or forget the money, right? The fact that you stayed home on a Saturday night is what will piss you off first. And, and, you, and that's, what, that's where boxing started to go. Every time you stayed home on Saturday night, you know, they charged you fucking 80 to 100 bucks. And you saw these two multimillionaires run around and try not to fight each other so that they yeah. could win and, and go on to the next multi-million dollar fight, mm -hmm. right? When you tune into a UFC, from the first fight of the night to the main event, these fucking kids go, man. They go. And you see the shit that you stayed home on Saturday night and paid fucking 80 bucks to see yeah it's like uh when you who that adesanya guy he just lost yep. uh and that it. it was an it was an incredible fight but the fight before that when he was defending his belt it was kind of like five rounds of like what are we doing here he's yep. kind of just bouncing yeah. around you do yeah, kind of yeah. play yourself like man people were getting uh, we, yeah that, people were yeah, getting mad on that last fight and oh, but, buddy, if but if i'm but if i'm adesanya i'm also saying like hey fuck you guys i won yeah like right. I, it, it doesn't matter and you can just play into that right yeah i feel like you this is it's a no lose when it comes to the ufc whether it's it's so true. Entertaining or it's not entertaining. It's like, if it's not entertaining, we just say, fuck you. Then it's like, hey, people well, are like, no, fuck you. We're going to watch you lose next well, time. Well, the difference is if you, if you saw the Israel Adesanya fight and you were unhappy with it, mm. there were four more fights on the undercard that you fucking loved. Yeah. Right? That's the difference. And with boxing, you wouldn't even show up for the undercards. You don't even pay attention to them. Everybody just shows up for the main event. Yeah. And if the main event sucks, the entire card was judged by the main event. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. That's a good point. When you have all these other endeavors and you introduce the Power Slap League, you look at it, and I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck are these guys doing? <laughs> right. This is a wild, right. wild. And then it's framed as like a, it's, it's like a martial arts show, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, what, uh, what enticed you? It's, it's, not, it's, it's not framed as a martial arts show. It's framed as a fight. 
It, and, and then people yeah. will say, it's an interesting well, fight. How the hell is this a fight? Yeah. Let me tell you something. It's, if you it's can entertaining get, as hell. If you can get viciously fucking knocked out, uh, it's a fight. It doesn't matter if it's with a slap, a punch, an elbow, a knee, yeah. or a head kick. You were just in a fight. And you just introduced the most disrespectful thing you can do during a fight. I, I guarantee you, you guys slap. have known people like this. Maybe, maybe not. I've known plenty in my day. I've known some guys who are bad dudes, uh, uh, you know, in the ring and out in the street. And they got to a point where they didn't hit anybody anymore. They would slap them because, mm -hmm. you know. They were that vicious. They were, they were wrecking people, yeah. punching yeah. them. So they would just slap guys and knock them out. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, I started watching some of this slap stuff that was coming up on the internet. The Russian bear or something like that. 100%. Was that the guy? Uh, yeah. uh, what's his name? Um, yeah. Dude, he Russian. was, you watch that because you have your buddies, you'd be sitting in the sauna and you'd be like, hey, watch this fucking Russian cat. Right. And he was right. like the Russian bear. And he's just like this hairy ass. He's got a fur coat on with the shirt off. And he is just disintegrating oh, dudes. Yes, disintegrating cats. Exactly. So it's 2017. You start seeing these videos on YouTube. Exactly. And so your mind goes to what? Fascinated by yeah. this, right? So I start taking a deeper dive and looking into it and uh i'm looking at the numbers that it's pulling on on youtube and i'm like 350 million views that's fucking crazy that's, that's like in a the eye. fucking justin bieber music video you yeah, know what i mean yeah. i'm like this is nuts so i uh the guy that was putting on those events from russia i met him in la one one, one uh, day i flew out to la to meet him <laughs> started talking to him and Your life is uh, incredible Look fascinating russian so I said, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to fucking do this. So I start getting into it and uh, COVID hits. So I got to deal with the UFC and, you know, getting, getting that going during COVID. And then we get through COVID and I, I start getting into it again. And let me just put it to you this way. I start this thing. I, first of all, we get a sanction by the Nevada State Athletic Commission to turn it into a sport. I'm looking for some of the guys who are considered the best out there so that we can start building rankings and, and, and do the first title fights. So we did welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight. Four easy. Um, you know, everybody can follow it. Everybody understands those weight classes. And we, uh, we, we, we put an event together last March mm -hmm. just to kind of see it. So it's my first time ever seeing it live in person. Oh, you, you put an event together and you haven't even seen it live yet. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, we put put on an event to. The, there's a whole lot you're saying right now. We need to unpack, but I need I want to need you. This is uh, this is incredible. I'm fucking with the production. I want to see how to you know how should the lighting be? How should this be? You know, we're we're starting to build what is going to eventually become the sport. And uh, we put on the first event. Holy fucking shit, man! As these guys start slapping each other, the sound, fucking knockouts. The, everything about it is just what I expected, but. Dude. Even more, you know what it's I mean? A wild thought it's process like, yeah. for entertainment. It's Bro, fucking... dudes are just like laying on the ground. And, and then the rep, and then they pick them up. They're like, you good? Yeah, let's get him back up there. 100. <laughs> yeah, percent Let's get him back up. And what you're gonna do is hold this fucking pole it is and so just so incredibly it. entertaining. Yeah. Okay, so there's a, a couple things you did. You first off, we need to go to COVID in, in a second because I thought you handled when sports were dead. You kept sports alive. Thank we'll you. go that, to that in a second. Yep. You go, you meet this guy in Russia, or sorry, in LA. He's LA. from Russia. Yeah. You sit there and you have this conversation. I love the fact that you're putting people together to slap each other, right? Simple terms. Yeah, well, I asked him how it got started. What did you right. do? Where'd you find these guys and all this stuff? Just kind of doing some homework on it. Yeah. Jumped on the, I mean. You jumped on a little gold mine for yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's, it's like you get 350 million, but it's so easily and short and consumed. Like you can just watch a slap right. and it's just the brain, the way our bra everybody's yeah, brain is now. seconds, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a... The younger generation. Yeah, like yes. do it before 100%. I even need to see a fight. It's like, hey, I'm jumping on this because you see kind of the big picture of everything it. that's being said negatively. First of all, let's start with this. Everything that's negative that's being said about it is an attack on me. It's it's me that these guys are attacking. It's not the actual slapping. The media, it's all about me. Okay. They they want to they want to fuck me. That's why they're saying what they're saying about slap. Because this shit was going on. This shit's been on the internet since 17 is when I first saw it. Yeah, Am I yeah but it's only, also in Russia. There's 350 million views, but I'm the only fucking guy that's seen it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no stories written. There's no, oh my God, this is horrible. How's this on social media? Children are watching this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? This has been going on since fucking, well, I noticed it in 17. It could have been before that for all I know. 
But now it's a fucking, you know, it's 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 a it's horrible and it's a tragedy and it needs to go away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's start there, right? So, uh, we we go. Let, let me tell you this one real quick. So, I started a power slap um, TikTok mm. two and a half weeks ago. As of two days ago. It has, uh, hey, Lene, see how many followers it has now. But it had- There's, there's, an, M, there's an M attached to it. 1.7 million followers. It was 1.8? Never mind, it's 1.8. Yesterday it was 1.7. Like two days ago it was 1.7. Like tomorrow it's going to be over 2 million. So when we first opened it, it was growing 10,000 followers an hour. Yeah. Then it went to 100,000 every two days. Now yeah. it, we're at 100,000 every two days. It grows, okay? Dude. 688 million views in two and a half weeks. Yeah. Okay. Instagram, we have almost 400,000 followers. 166 million in, 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 in two and a half weeks. And I could keep going on and on right. with the international and all this other shit. So you fucking nailed it right on the head. The younger generation, it's fast. It's easy to consume. It's like, holy shit, you know, and, and they're eating it. And you can watch the same slap multiple times because you're like, you want to see the slap, you want to see the guy on the ground, look at this referee, they're helping him back up. Oh yeah, my god, facial God's reactions, people. Yeah. Yes, it's it's it is. Yeah, because you're not just gonna watch one slap one time. That's a five slapper. It's yeah. like eating a ba it's eating a chip from a, a uh, from a bag. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna have one. You're gonna have four, or five yeah, 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 yeah. boys right there. So even more fascinating. So you look at this thing and you look at it on a um, you know, and all the media is like, oh, this thing's a flop. It's fucking this that. They have fucking no idea what they're talking about, number one. I laugh when I read their, their stories. And, and, and here's the truth. If the media says something's bad and it's good and it should go away, you got a fucking home run. You know you hit, you know yeah. it's going to be successful. Right. Because these guys know jack shit about anything, right? And then you look at, at the, uh, the television, right? Linear television is dying on the vine, right? TBS right. has been awesome with us. It's been, it's been great for us. So we're the only thing coming out of AEW wrestling. AEW wrestling pulls a great number, and everything they tried just dumps right off into the abyss. They tried Family Guy, American Dad, Bob's Burgers, Young Sheldon, all these different shows that haven't worked. We go in there, and, you know, much older demo and everything else, we held 50% of AEW's audience. No shit. And every Wednesday night, we're number two on all of cable with men behind the NBA. The fucking thing is three weeks Three weeks old. Three so. weeks old. Twenty-one days. So You're even thinking how nobody exactly. So even yeah, on bro, you thinking what, what did you say? He's sitting there in twenty seventeen. Like nobody, no one's doing this. How'd nobody make a move on this. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. It's phenomenal. So over the wait till you see what I do in the in the next five weeks with with, with power slap and, and where this goes. So after the first uh, season here that we've done, the other thing that's really good for us that you know when you do a reality show like the one that we have. We know every episode gets better. Mm. And I haven't seen episode seven yet, but Craig Pelligian, my partner, the producer, he does tons of television. Um, he says episode seven is the best TV show he's seen in two years. Really? Yeah. So, you know, we know what we have in, in, in the can already, so it's good to know that. But watch what happens with this thing over the over the next five weeks. Yeah, so you're, okay, you're across the pond. You're, you're this guy from Russia. You bring it to Nevada. You get it all bundled up where you're allowed to sell it, allowed to do it in the state of Nevada. Then the next thing you say is we now we go and find talent. What talent? What are you talking? You go in like the back <laughs> areas and like in the, the backyards like this. And be like, and hey, be you guys slap. slap. How much do you weigh? All right, lightweight. Yeah. You are right, heavyweight. It's almost like how this. are you finding these cats? Let me tell you how good you guys are. You guys are so fucking good. It's almost like the show is like scripted. This is fucking crazy. Oh, well, we have earpieces. You don't see. So them. my next <laughs> yeah. thing I was gonna say to you is we go into this thing. We start looking for the talent. So yeah. We find the guys that you know. The, the, like I said. I didn't just start this. This has been around since 16, 17 or earlier for all I know. Yeah. But th I started to notice it in 17. And uh, so there's guys out there. So we go out and there's, there's this guy um, who, who, had a, who had a league out in the Midwest and, you know, had a good grip. We, we, we hired him. He came in as a consultant and he walked us through who some of the best guys, you know, in, in, in the country are. Mm -hmm. So we put it together. We, we're coming up on episode four. On TBS tomorrow night on TBS is episode four, and uh, we've already got like 930 people that have mailed in and said, "Yeah, I'm a professional slapper, and I want I want to be in the next season." <laughs> so now what we're going to do is yeah, we're going to put together at the at the at the Performance Institute, the UFC Performance Institute. I'm going to put together a combine, 
where these guys come in. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah, bro. These guys that is come incredible. in. What are the, what are the, we, what are the we, exercise? We, like, what are the all, measurables? The only thing you need is that little little uh, punching bag that comes down. You punch it. You see how much power. They actually measure have their hand. Put a palm on it. Measure you got to measure hand. the hand. There's actually, you'll see it. If you watch this season of the show, the coaches train the fighters. And, and you know, they have a power cube where they can test their force, um, you know, how much force per square inch they're slapping with and neck strength and all these different things that go into I didn't put I didn't think about the neck. Being a good slapper. I did not yeah. think about the neck. Yeah, you gotta have you gotta have the neck strength. You, know, you gotta have a chin. Thing, yeah. Yeah, and you got to win the fucking coin toss. The coin toss determines whether you go first <laughs> yeah, or second. <laughs> you got to win the talking about overtime football yeah. with that. Like whoever gets that wins. Yeah, dude. So what's the combine like? What does the combine help you do other than like put guys in the system? Like does it, it does it ever go to a little team format? Does yeah. The it, other thing that we're gonna have is we're gonna bring in these guys that are gonna be coaches, and as guys come through the Performance Institute, they're gonna train these guys on because there are rules on flinching. You know, uh, clubbing, where you're hitting with this part of the hand instead yeah. of the slap. Um, you, uh, you can't move your feet. Your feet have to stay, stay. You know, so there's a lot of different rules that that guys have to, um, you know, train. And the other big thing is we have to help get the commission trained. Like when you become a referee for boxing, there's a lot of you know. You go to these gyms, these local gyms, and guys are sparring. You actually get in there and move around with the guys while they're sparring. Yeah. And if you see them tying up, you break them apart, and you get in there and work. And a lot of the uh, MMA referees do the same thing. So the refs need reps, you know, yeah. to, to be able to do this. So I'm actually going to put on a – we got a, our first live fight is going to be in March. I'm actually going to do a fight the Wednesday before the fight. Uh, I'm going to do another fight to, to, to get the refs some, some reps mm. and, and get them working. But yeah, this, Yo, You're about to have like a world – Ranking system with all these people who want to do this like yep. could be the most massive. That's what's going to happen. The barrier to entry is like yeah. low. Like, do you have a big hand? Do you have a chin? Do you feel like you're tough? Like, well, the other great. Do you feel like you're tough. <laughs> I mean, think about, yeah. think about yeah. that. Hey, feet square. You can't flinch. I'm Hold on to tough. that pole. I feel like just I can do it. Pray to God you just don't get. Yeah. Win the okay. coin hey, pray to God it's tails when you call yeah. tails. Yeah. Well, you know what's going to happen. What's going to happen is the same thing that happened with MMA. Is once there's fucking real money involved in this, you know. And and let me address that too. There were, you know. My buddies in the media saying, oh, my God, these guys are only getting paid fucking this. And yeah. We invested fucking $10 million, mm -hmm. me and the Fertitta brothers, into this thing to fucking launch this thing. We invested $10 million of our own money to, to do this thing, much like, you know, the UFC when we started the UFC. Um, this is a startup like any other fucking startup business. Right. And these guys that are in, it, in this first season are the pioneers, much like the guys who played baseball in the early days in the NFL and, and the UFC, you know. Yeah. Um, so, one, you know, once we get this thing where there's going to be real money involved, you'll be surprised who you see. I'll bet you start seeing NFL players like the guys that want to box and get into, you know, mm -hmm. when Lineman you talk about make the cut or something talk like Talk about that. guys who can fucking buddy, have who's the, the buddy power Cowboys? and the velocity to slap and the neck strength and the chins. You think of a lot of NFL players that, that could be a part of this. You're probably going to end up getting celebrities who want to be a part of this and who knows, but. There's celebrities that want to slap the shit out of each other. 100%. Like they're pissed off and we'll settle it. Well, in the beginning, we'll probably get My like purse, the, yeah. the Danny Bonaducci's and shit like that. But yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> These yeah. guys don't even know who the fuck Danny Bonaducci is. No, I said yeah no. twice, but I had no idea you're talking about. I was like, yeah, for sure. What's the next question I got to ask here? <laughs> That's hilarious. Dude, um, hey, I just, you know how fucking old I am now. These guys don't know who Danny Bonaducci is. Who's Danny Bonaducci? He was a celebrity back in the day when I was, you know who he is? My dad would be so pissed I, off. I Yeah, so yeah, he was either, on a show but, in, in, dude, in the go 80s, ahead and get me, boys. Partridge family. And uh, and then he ended up, you know, he, he became a fucking lunatic. He started doing all this boxing, like celebrity boxing, and he has a radio show he had at the time, I think, in Philly or something. But yeah, he was he was a wild man from the eighties. Dude. Yeah, okay. I've been I've I've learned now. I've absolutely <laughs> hey, learned. Here's a uh a business. Oh, that's question. him right there. When you yeah, that's the only body business question? Yeah, I want to ask a business question. Since uh, now that you're investing $10 million and in going into the power slap, what are some things that you have learned over the course of the years because you did the, you did the startup with the UFC, acquired that? What are some of the things you can fast track now knowing I won't make that same mistake again as far as growing the sport uh, now that you have power slap? Hey, that's a great question, dude. Well, the difference is, is that now because of the UFC and what I've done with the UFC, it's much easier to go to get television deals or, or distribution deals, sponsors, the list goes on and on. I mean, we, we didn't have real sponsors in the UFC till like 2006, five, six. We, yeah. You know, if you look at the first season of The Ultimate Fighter, 
fucking mat is blue. <laughs> blue, there's nothing on it. Yeah. You know, we had no sponsor. Nobody wanted to sponsor the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. Um, we have sponsors on this first season of uh, Power Slap. So, you know, because of the success that, that I've had with the UFC, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to get things yeah. like that done than it was back in 2001. Right, because I would assume your mind, like trying to figure out how you're going to build the UFC, your mind was probably a lot more cluttered on which action steps to take. When I know, you're making I know, those I know the right. Now, obviously you have the value that can like, oh, we know, we know how we're going to point to this thing. But I'm sure your clarity now on like, this is the direct approach we're going to be taking in, you know, X, Y, and Z, these areas as like a business guy, uh, entrepreneur, all of that stuff that you've built over the years. hundred percent. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 you know, I, I saw something, there was, there was a, a, a negative story written about me a couple of weeks ago where they talked to an old employee and, and that the old employee, and I know who it was too, uh, was saying, uh, yeah, Ari is convinced that Dana has the secret formula to run the UFC. Yeah, motherfucker, I absolutely positively have the secret formula to run the UFC. I look at all the other promoters, and I look at every single thing that they do wrong, and I go, why would they still do that? They, if you watch what we did, why would you still, why are they doing that? Why are they doing this? And you're going to do the same thing with Slap. Yeah. Same thing. What are, you have to run it like a business. You yeah. have to run this thing like a business. Hey, we probably got like two more questions. He's got a boogie soon. Uh, Jack, I know, I know you. I know, you I know I saw him. I saw him. Yeah, they're giving, they're giving. Okay. Yeah, I saw yeah, I was like, say, yeah. Well, yeah. I know you had one. We know he does well. He's flying probably out of Scottsdale, yeah. you know. <laughs> a nice little Gulfstream piece. Yeah. Headed out to, back to Vegas. Um, I, I want to bring you back to, to Chandler McGregor real quick. Yep. Help, two questions. When, do, when is... Get three again because I have one more. You have one more? When is that fight going to happen? When? When. Okay. And then two, how do you see it going? So we literally don't have any of that in place yet. Love We're that. going to get out here and film these guys by me. doing, you know, doing the show, and then we'll figure out uh, when and where and all that stuff. Because this is one of those, I was talking about this today. This is one of those fights. This could, this could be Madison Square Garden. This could be Dallas, Texas Stadium. Mm. This could be, you know, Vegas in uh, you know, Raider Stadium or at T-Mobile. Oh, Raider, Raider Stadium. Ew. You know what I mean? We know Mike wants to fight in Vegas. That's like his, he's never fought in Vegas. Yeah. And so we're just. We, we could put together, you know, you look at the main event with these two and then we could put together a badass card underneath it that we could do this at any arena or any stadium. Um, so we got to figure that out. We're kind of still playing with that. And, uh, and what, oh, how do I think it goes? Yeah. This, I know exactly how it goes. This fight is absolute and pure fucking violence from the minute the bell rings yeah. till the fight is over. You know, stylistically, when you match these two up, there's no way this fight sucks. It's incredible. No, yeah. This fight's incredible. Who wins? That I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. it will be electric. Who, who, who assume, hits that button first? I would assume it'll be some interesting uh, bumps along the way with hitting the fight exactly. Dotted. Like, I can sit here just being a, a, a fan like watching McGregor over the years, like trying to hold some of these situations hostage until he gets whatever he wants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, you probably yeah, get a whole lot on it. You know, he, he, he doesn't really do that. It, it might appear like he does that. You know, Connor, Connor, you know, I, I always hate to compare anybody to Ali, but I always compare him to Ali because he's so good at playing the mental game. He really is. With, 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 with opponents and stuff like that. But as far as us as a business, I mean, I look at Connor as a great partner. He, he's not one of those guys, believe me, I've dealt with some bad guys in the past that will do dirty shit to try to hold you up for more money and stuff like that. He's not that guy. Connor's not that guy. Yeah. You have a story that you can share about some guys who would do some dirty shit? Tito Ortiz. Shit? Tito Ortiz was the worst with that. He was the worst. With like get, almost getting to the finish line and then like... Yeah, you'd get there, you'd, moving you'd, the goal you'd have a deal with him, you'd start going and he'd call you three days before the fight and say, I want more money. Three days before the yeah, fight? that isn't how this works. Yeah, Tito, Tito did some bad shit in his day. That's why he and I, you know, uh, had the relationship that we had. And, 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 you know, it's why I don't have a relationship with him today. Yeah. You know, at the time when the company was the most vulnerable, Tito Ortiz was the worst to deal with. Damn, man. Damn. What was the one question you wanted to ask? I was just going to say, like, what would you tell your young self back when you started the UFC, being where you're at now, or what advice or just anything that you would tell your younger self? I don't know, man. When I, when I was younger, I, I was a savage. I, I just, I, uh, I believed in this thing from day one. I stayed the course. I didn't listen to all the outside noise. It's like right now, this exact same thing with slap. You know what I mean? 
not, these people are completely irrelevant. The, the noise that's going on out there, you don't listen to it. You, you, you know what's right. You know what you want to do. You know how you want to build your business, and you stay the course that you know is right for, for the company. You don't listen to any of this outside bullshit. And I think that's the hardest part for people who, um, no matter what line of work you're in, to, to drown out that negativity and not let it influence you or, uh, or listen to it. If anything, let it just fuel you to get out there and shove it up their ass and <laughs> prove to them all that they were wrong. I mean, that's the only, that's the only reason you should ever listen to it is, is for fuel to, right. to, to, to get out and win. But the, 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 all this stuff, when you, when you listen to the media, you're listening to people who have never fucking accomplished anything ever. They've never built a business. Nobody's ever depended on them for a paycheck. They're giving you their opinion. And what the fuck does their opinion matter? It doesn't matter. It means shit. You know what I mean? They're out there working just like you. They have to sell their stories. Their story has to, ha, people have to read it. So they have to figure out ways to make people try to read their fucking story. This is exactly why anybody who's mainstream or doing big things would rather come do this, a podcast like this with guys like you. This has been a great fucking interview. I don't know how long it's lasted, but it's felt like five fucking minutes. Right. Um, this is where it's all headed. People would rather come down and sit down with people like you than talk to these fucking know nothing, do nothing, uh, never accomplished nothing. Motherfucker. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. Yeah. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Dana, we appreciate you, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank awesome. you for taking time out of your day. We knew you had like a schedule and it was crazy. You got to boogie back to Vegas. Thank you so much for taking the time out for oh, us. I love it. Congrats on all your success, man. This is thank good you, shit. Man. This is awesome. Yeah. Congrats.